Hello everybody, welcome to chapter 3, Workplace Setting. In this chapter, we are discussing about our workplace. It may be hospital, it may be nursing home, it may be long-term care home facilities, it may be client's home, which we call the community nursing. We go home to home and provide the, the client quality healthcare services. That's called community setting. So no matter which setting we work, we are responsible, we are accountable, we are uh, sincere, and we have to work honestly. Community, let's talk about community and facility-based setting. Community and facility. These are the two clearly different setting. We work as personal support worker. Each setting has a different goals and services. Each setting has a different goals and services. Support worker provide vital services, very important services, significant services that enables client to be as safe. We provide them safe care. We provide them comfort, comfortable, dignified, and independent as possible. Our main goal of providing the vital services must be providing them safe, comfortable, dignified, independent type of care. Again, it should be culturally appropriate care. We will learn it in other chapters. Current trend within the Canadian healthcare system is to decrease hospital costs. That's why there are shorter hospital stays nowadays. It's called outpatient hospital service. To decrease the hospital cost, costs and increase resources in the community, and increase resources in the community, how to increase resources in the community-based services? It can be increased by increasing the number of the nurses who can visit the clients in the community. We can increase the good quality health services in the community by educating more and more PSWs and so on. Regardless of where you work, you must be familiar with your scope of practice. It is called scope of practice. It means what are the things you must do and what are the things you cannot do, you must not do. These are called the scope of practice. Your area of your services. So basically, while summarizing here, no matter whether we work in the community or in the facility, our role is to provide safe, comfortable, dignified, independent care, even culturally appropriate care to our clients, our patients, our residents. And now the Canadian current trend is very short hospital stay and clients are encouraged to live in the community setting and other setting and we have to know what we have to do and we have to know what we have not to do. Types of setting. Let's discuss as a support worker, these are the varieties of type of setting we are working. It's a acute care. Let's begin from acute care. Anybody knows what is mean by acute care? Acute care is the hospital setting. It is the primary focus of acute care is on the diagnostic procedure, different lab activities, treatment, 
the immediate care, hospital stay nowadays are very short, so days to weeks, maximum three months. And the treatment process could be for the life-threatening diseases such as influenza or pneumonia. Certain surgical procedures, they are also uh, done. When somebody is in the emergency room for the motor vehicle accident, that person gets acute care. And acute care is in the hospital setting. Now let's go to sub-acute care setting. It is also called complex continuing care or convulsant care. Another name of sub-acute care is complex continuing care or convulsant care. If you read the textbook, so many things are there in the textbook. Please, I highly encourage you to follow the textbooks as well. And in this sub-acute care setting, different surgical activities are done or for the treatment of the injuries are performed. For example, a patient is being stabilized after the serious illness, such as hip replacement, knee replacement. Sometimes it is called total hip replacement because of the injury. The doctors, the surgical procedure, uh, they change the total hip of the person. And these clients are supported by a broader a group of healthcare team like the doctor, nurses, occupational therapist who designs the wheelchair and the mattresses and the bed suitable for the patient and the physiotherapist who are working for their increase the mobility and our role as a personal support worker is to provide them personal care, give them oral care, mouth care, denture care, do not clean the denture with hot water. Clean the denture with the water of room temperature and provide them appropriate food, giving them care, taking them to the shower and so on. And finally, the sub-acute care, the patients are discharged to other facility, either their own home or long-term care facilities. Now, let's go to long-term care facility. When the long-term care, people have the persistent illness, chronic illness, and ongoing illness, such as diabetes, multiple sclerosis, Alzheimer's disease, or other dementias, other types of dementia, when the illness is chronic and that illness cannot be completely cured, in that condition, the, the, that person is referred to the long-term care facility. The person needs long-term care. And that person is, the person goes to long-term care either from the hospital or from the home, from the community when their care is not adequate at home, clients are transferred to long-term care homes and they stay there as a long-term care resident, not the client. Client is in the community, patient is in the hospital, in the long-term care, they are con uh, named as resident, long-term care home resident. Now let's do respite care. What do you mean by respite care? Uh, it, it is a high level of temporary care. It gives a break to person's caregiver from their duty. For example, a wife is looking after her, after her husband, but the wife has a job or she has to go for the groceries or the pharmacies to bring the medication 
During that period, our job as a personal support worker is to stay with the resident, with the client at home and release uh, the client's wife to go outside. It gives a kind of release from the continuous work, respite care means. It is provided in the client's home, but hospital and long-term care home also provided this type of care nowadays and until they are properly transferred to the permanent setting. The respite care is given. Now, rehabilitation and restorative care. What do you mean by rehabilitation? Rehabilitation starts after the after the treatment process, for example, when surgical activities are performed in the hospital, clients, patients' health is stabilized, they are sent to the hospital rehab center where they are given different education and their education is, the goal of the education in the rehabilitation center is to restore or improve the client independence so that the client can start self-care. Client can improve independence. Client can reintroduce himself or herself in the community, in the society as an independent person. That is also called restorative care. Once the disease process is completely cured and now they are reintroduced with this community setting, it is called rehabilitation and restorative, where different teaching activities and educational activities take place. Now let's talk about the palliative care setting. Palliative care setting can be in the hospital, in the rehab or long-term care facility, and uh, usually it happens in the client's home as well. In palliative care, it is also called the end life care. The person is in the ending stage of their life, his or her life. It is only giving comfort to the person. It is maximum amount of comfort is provided to the client who is in the palliative care. For example, the third stage cancer, the person is um, going to die very soon. At that time, the pain management, the medication for the pain management is provided as per ne needed so that the client should experience more comfort in the ending part of their lives. It is called palliative care. Now let's go to hospice care. Hospice care is one part of palliative care. Again, the client is in the ending part of their life. But in hospice care, we support workers role or the healthcare team's role can be to meet the client's emotional, social, and spiritual need. The person is on the last moment of bed, uh, last moment of uh, life. At that time, we have to provide them care as uh, which is called culturally sensitive, culturally appropriate care. If they are spiritual, they are strongly religious minded people. We have to call their priest or their religious leader so that they can perform certain rituals before they pass away. This is called hospice care. Another and the most alarming condition nowadays is mental health care. In mental health, there are mental health hospital once people are in the mental health scenarios, it is very difficult to cure. 
only the medication are given for the symptom management. And our role as a personal support worker, we have to work in the with the mental health clients. But it is sometimes it is very difficult to work with the mental health, the clients with the mental health issues because of the safety region, which we can get the message from the mental health hospital. There is a client, sometimes they are violent and they attack the healthcare workers, they attack the doctors and the nurses as well. So whatever is the setting, it is another thing, but our duty as a personal support worker is to provide quality care, to provide them compassionate care, to provide them dignified care, to provide them safe care, and to provide them confidential care, and so on. Community-based setting. Most common setting is the client's home. Remember, community means client's home. Community, the another name for the community nursing is client's home. We provide the care to the client in their home or the place of their residence. Service include health care and support services. Health care, we do health care, we, we are the part of the health care and we are the biggest part of supportive services. We support the people sometime by giving them sour, sometime preparing their meal, sometime giving them mouth care, sometime partial bed bath or full bath, and uh, sometimes we do their groceries and sometimes we uh, do their laundries as well. So depend on what type of work is mentioned in the care plan we have to do in the community setting. And sometimes we give them respite care when their family members are away from the home. We work with the client. We, we emotionally support the client. We don't let the client feel alone, isolated from the family member when they have to go outside the house, outside their homes. Employers include home care agencies. The community setting Community nursing or PSW work in the community, our employers are the home care agencies. There are so many home care agencies you can find. Residential facility, again, there are residential facility. Group homes, certain type of people are uh, kept in a group and they are considered the group home. Retirement residence, they are also called the retirement residence. Day program. When certain conditions, the age people are, they are um, gathered in the day program and school boards. Even in the school boards, there are different type of community-based services. Retirement homes also called assisted living residence. Retirement home also called assisted living. Somebody is assisting the people who are retired there. Somebody is assisting them for, and also the resident or the supportive housing facility. Some people are, they are placed in the housing facilities and provided care as a community-based setting. Home care. Home care is significant part of community-based care we support workers are supposed to do it. Support workers have the central role within the home care. As we already discussed about it, support worker may have the extended role, instrumental role in the community uh, or the home care setting. Basically, we are providing them personal care, personal care, personal care, maybe in the morning time, after the lunch, during the afternoon, in the evening, and before they go to bed. Basically, we give them different cares. We, we help them in bowel movement and bladder, mo bladder movement. We help them taking them in the washroom, 
we assist them in the activities of daily livings. In activities of daily living, so many things are important. We help them in grooming. We help them in oral care. We help them in taking, taking them in the bathtub and giving them bath. And sometimes we may have to look after the child also. It is child care. We may have to play a significant role in the transportation when the client needs to go from one place to other places. For example, the client needs to go to the hospital or the doctor's clinic. We need to go with the client and we have to follow the transportation uh, pattern. And home management. In the home management, we may have to go for the grocery. We are cleaning the house, doing some laundry, and so on. So, as I told you already, the personal support worker, they have the extended role. The significance of our role is increasing day by day. That's why we have to be very careful about our scope of practice. Home care setting continued. Support workers must follow agency's policy. So many agencies are hiring the support workers and they are sending the support workers to the home. And home care support worker, they must have to follow the agency's policy. All the policies of the agencies are based on the Health Care Act and the client's right, the client's health care consumer's right. They have so many rights and all the policies are based on their benefit, policies and procedures. Box 31 issues and challenges associated with the working in home care setting. If you see the page number 38, there are so many challenges we can find out. Let's go there. The most important challenge associated with uh, the home care is client safety. You are working alone in a client's home and client safety is very important. It is considered number one priority in the home care setting. You have to always be careful about client safety. You have to lower the bed, prevent the fall of the client. You have to remind the time of medication administration you have to remind the client to take the medication in time. You have to double check with the right dose and right time and right route of the medication. You have to be communicating with the nursing supervisor of your agencies or the facility. Again, the second challenge could be your own healthcare challenge. Sometimes the family member maybe trying to abuse the personal support worker. Sometimes the client himself or herself tries to abuse the personal support worker. It is the challenge of our own condition. Again, we have to deal with different people in the home care setting. We have to work in between among among and between the different scenarios. Sometimes we have to work with the family member. And again, we have to follow the agency policies and procedure. Again, we have to follow the guidelines of our scope of practice. There are so many things interconnected with the issues and challenges. We have to follow that. For that, we must to have a professional communication with all other people. We have to develop therapeutic relationship with the client and professional relationship with the family members and uh, our healthcare agencies. Support workers may work part-time, full-time in a community day program or directly for the client. Sometime the client directly hires you as a support worker and you may have to work morning shift, day shift or sometime night shift also. And again, the nature of the work could be the part-time or full-time. Again, 
It doesn't matter whether we work part-time or full-time. Our responsibilities, our scope of practice, our professionalism is the same. It remains the same, no matter how many hours a day we work. Working in the facility. Facility means hospital, long-term long care homes, nursing homes, or retirement homes. It could be facility. It provides clients with the accommodation. They live there. Accommodation means they are living there. They are not living in their own personal house. Health care and support services. They live there. They get their health care services and support services. They need the support services every moment, depending on their health condition. They need their health care. They need to get all the fundamental health care provided by the facility. Hospital is for clients with acute illness. Acute illness is treated in the emergency room. See here, acute illness, like motor vehicle accident. It gives excessive bleeding, like um, childbirth, bleeding after that. It could be acute care. All the surgical activities, it goes with acute care. Injuries like fall, broken hip, broken knees, broken bone, um, uh, sometimes the client has heart attack, sometimes the client has uh, cerebrovascular accident, it is called a stroke. These all are acute care and hospital are the acute care setting. Injury who requires the admission and care on the relatively short term basis. So this hospital stay are relatively short term basis as we already discussed. Chronic care or long term care facility. Long term care facility as we already discussed when the people, when the resident, when the people, individual have a incurable long term chronic disease process, they are placed in the long term care facility and that is their home. And long term care facility is home to people who are not able to live independently in their own home and who require 24 hour nursing services. They need medication at midnight. They need personal care in the morning. They need somebody to feed them. They need somebody to ambulate them, to walk with them in the hallways. They need physiotherapist every morning. So in this scenario, the client is placed in the long-term care facility and client is provided all the necessary required 24-hour cares. Also called complex care facility or nursing homes. When people have a chronic disease condition, which is incurable, only the symptom management is possible. They are giving medication to manage the symptom, to manage the pain, and those complex care facilities or nursing homes also a very, very significant area of our work. We might be working in those places. Residential facilities. Remember, these are the big facilities for those people. Facilities that provide living accommodation, care and support services. Those facilities provide living accommodation and care and support services. People living there are called resident. In the residential, even the long-term care home, people are called resident because it is home of it is their home the full name is long-term care homes and they are called residents can be temporary or permanent home the long-term care homes or living accommodation new living accommodation area can be their temporary homes or the permanent homes they do not go to their own home because they need 24-hour care for. 
Example, frail older adults. Frail means very weak, who are bed bound, who cannot move, who are, who are not independent, who depend everything on other. Those adults, they are frail older adults. They live in the li living accommodation. Individuals of all ages with physical disabilities. When people have a physical disability, they cannot do the activities of daily living. They cannot go to washroom on their own. They need support for the breakfast, support for the lunch, support for the personal care. That's why this type of people with the physical disabilities, they are placed in the residential facilities. Mental health challenges or both. Certain people, they have a mental health challenges. Some, such as depression. So many people are diagnosed with depression in the city life or in the rural area, no matter where people live. And those clients with the mental health disorder, it is very difficult to work with them sometime. But other time, they are calm and quiet. If they take the medication in time, the medication, the therapeutic effect of the medication works well, they are calm and quiet, otherwise they are violating and they are violative and sometimes they put a risk on other people. Individual with substance addiction, those people who depend on the street drugs, recreational drugs, and those who misuse the Regular drugs, prescri prescription drugs, they are considered the people with the drug addiction or the substance abuse. And these people are also our client. We have to look after them. We have to give them nursing care. We have to give them personal care and so on. Similarly, let's talk about Assisted living facility. What do you mean by assisted living facility? It may be the supporting housing or assisted living. A house is rented by a group of people or organization and people are placed in those house. Often private apartments, private apartments, client require minimal care and support services. We PSW go to the apartment of the client and give them certain services. Sometimes we, uh, we give them bed bath or sometimes we take their laundry and clean their clothes there in the laundry room and sometimes we prepare them breakfast, etc. It is considered a community-based service. Even if they live in the apartment buildings and the condominium buildings, it is considered a community-based service because it is not the healthcare facility. It is just the um, apartment building or the condominium building. And provide 24-hour supervision, social and recreational programs, one or two daily meals, and housekeeping and laundry services. Yes, of course, as we already discussed about that, they also need 24-hour services and supervision. Nurses are supervising them. We PSWs are working with the client. Their friends and family members are coming there, taking them for the public park and the uh, uh, departmental stores, big shopping malls for their recreational activities and different they are encouraged to play different games one or two daily meals they need one or two daily meals we have to prepare for their meals and housekeeping means we just have to clean their house and put the things in their places and the laundry services these are very integral part of our job so don't feel shy that we are doing laundry for other people. This is a healthcare facility. All people are working for the benefit of our clients, not our benefit, but for the benefit of our clients. And our job description um, are associated with all these activities. 
approved and licensed by the provincial or territorial government. We are working in those places. Those places are approved and licensed by the provincial and the territorial government, and they are allowed to keep those clients there. Maybe the number depends on the size of the facility. Maybe 20 people live in the facility, 30 people live in the assisted uh, living facility. It depends. Now, group homes. It is also the similar concept, the group, group home and the assisted living facility, almost the same thing. But the number is different. A small, a small number of people with the physical or mental disability live together and receive supervision by the doctors and the nurses and the physiotherapists and occupational therapists and support services. We are the personal support worker and we provide them support services. Share a house in a residential neighborhood. And a house is rented or a house is purchased for this purpose and it is made a group home. Usually have own bedroom and share a bathroom. They, they live in a house and they have to sometimes share the bathroom or one bedroom. They have their own separate bedroom in the group homes. Often, residents are adolescents or young adults. Not the children and um, babies are put in the group home. The residents are adolescent. They are young or they are senior people. Adolescents or young adults after 40 years with disabilities, behavioral or conduct disorder. Certain people have a behavioral disorder or conduct disorder or intellectual disability means person cannot speak language. The linguistic ability is impaired because of the injury in the head and certain conduct disorder means person has a stealing habit, shoplifting or stealing of somebody's car, or behavioral person has a negative behavioral issues like showing attitude, anger, mental health related disabilities. These are behavioral uh, issues of the person. So all these varieties of people are put together in the group home and they are given health care facility. Also older adults needing care women living abusive situations and people with the substance abuse issues. These are other people, older adults needing care, they are put in the group home. Women living abusive situation, women, they, they, they live the abusive situation, they are also put in the home to prevent from different abuses like sexual abuse, physical abuse, financial abuse, verbal abuse, emotional abuse. There are so many types of abuse we will be discussing in the later classes. And people with the substance abuse issue, like people who are uh, drug addicted, substance addicted, who are alcoholic, who drink alcohol, and they have the alcoholic syndrome type of disease, such people are also placed in the group homes. Now let's go to the retirement home, retirement residence. Now we basically, it is called retirement homes and retirement residence. It's the same thing. It's also known as a retirement homes. Basically people say it's retirement home. It provides accommodation, they live there. It provides the accommodation there and supervision for the older adult. After people get retired from their active life, they go to the retirement resident or retirement homes. And they are provided necessary uh, medical facilities. They are provided accommodation that includes their own room, their own uh, medication, healthcare facilities, nurses and supervisors. Everybody will be there looking after them. In some provinces and territories, these homes are often privately operated and are not regulated or financed by the government. Remember that all the healthcare organization, if they are open under the government's uh, conditions, they are funded by the government. If it is private, 
the private sector has to maintain everything. All the management are um, taken the responsibility by the private sectors, requiring the resident to pay the full cost. The resident who live in those private homes, they have to pay the full cost of money. It's the resident's responsibility to, to pay them the full cost. And it is the, um, it is the, it is the owner's responsibility to provide them quality health care. Now, community day program. In the community day program, what happens? What will be our role in the community day program? It is also called adult day center. Adult people are gathered together in a place during the day and they are in, they are encouraged to involve in the different activities to uh, make them active in the life and to to prevent them any uh, negativity in the in that age and provide them comfort and provide them uh, uh, social relationship as well any daytime program for people with physical or mental health issues or for older adults who need assistance. Such daytime program are given for varieties of people who are physically or mentally disabled. They have the certain mental health issues and the other older adults who need assistance. Also, they are put in the community day program may be held in the hospitals. This community day program could be in the hospital setting, in the nursing home, maybe in the nursing home, and community, certain community center, and recreational centers. Some recreational centers also are looking after those senior people. Adult day center, adult people are gathered in a place called adult day center. Churches, basements, in the church, they go for the praying and they go to the basement area. They live there in the basement and other settings. Varieties of settings these community day programs are conducted. Each day program is a unique. There is a typical schedule for every day. What program they are running for today is, uh, is being scheduled. So working directly for the client, it is another scenario. Our role as a support worker, the client may hire us as a personal support worker. At that situation, we are working directly for the clients. We go to their home or even if they are in the, in the hospital setting or long-term care setting, they hire us as their personal support worker. That's why our name is a personal support worker or healthcare aid. We go and we personally give them care. Only one person who hire us, we give them care. Maybe hired by or supervised by and work directly for the clients or their family. It is the family responsibility to hire you for the support of their loved ones and we have to work under their guidance. Uh, page number 41 describes in detail what are the issues and the challenges associated with working directly for the clients. These issues could be the client safety, issues could be the client safety, issues could be our own safety, issues could be heavy work, issues could be uh, abuse, abuse of the client, abuse of the healthcare worker, and so on. Similarly, working in the facility gives us different experience. Hospital and other medical facilities, maybe doctor's office, we may have to work as a support worker, and the hospital is another very important place to work. Not all hospital hire support worker nowadays, but many, but may be employed in any hospital area, including ICU and emergency ER. 
Sometimes support workers are placed in ICU and ER for client support, giving them personal care we need in those hospital settings. Healthcare services offer to both inpatient and outpatient. Inpatient means those who live in the hospital for a certain period of time. Outpatient means they go for the day and return home. We may be working for a couple of hours with those outpatients in the hospital. Care include acute care, subacute care, complex continuing care, respite care, rehabilitation services, palliative care, and mental health services. All these varieties of care, we already discussed about that. So acute care, subacute care, and complex continuing care, all this care, I highly encourage you to go through the textbook when you read the slide and go the textbook and the slide together. It is helpful and it allows you for the better understanding. Long-term care facilities, also called nursing homes, home for the age, long-term care homes, and special care homes. See different names for the same thing. Nursing home, home for the age, long-term care homes, and special care homes. It offers, means the long-term care facilities, they offer higher level of care than retirement resident and assisted, assisted living facilities. Long-term care homes are opened under the clear guidance of the government agencies and legal conditions are to be met while opening the long-term care facilities. Therefore, more chronic patients are, clients are, residents are, they are placed, they are put in those homes and given the special care. It is offered the higher level of care. See, the higher level of care means it gives more uh, sincere care than other places. It provides accommodation, 24-hour professional nursing care and support services. All the people in those long-term care facilities are working in three shift. 7 to 3, 3 to 11, and 11 to 7 a.m. All these three, in this rotation, people are being provided the 24-hour professional nursing care and so on. Most residents are frail older adults. The residents in the long-term care homes are very, very weak adults. They have the chronic disease condition like diabetes and uh, is, um, multiple sclerosis and other uh, cardiac issues, hip uh, surgery and the complication of other disease, those are very, very weak older people. Long-term care facilities are licensed. They are given the license by the government and regulated and funded by the province of the territory. It is, it is funded by the government and the government gives the funding only when the long-term care facilities, they are opened with the government license. Medicare covers some cost with the balance paid by the resident through the monthly fee. Even if they live in the long-term care facilities, even if the government pays for the certain amount of fund for the long-term care facilities, the resident have to pay money on a monthly basis. Sometimes if the resident cannot pay money, it's the government who pays on behalf of the resident. In this setting, support workers provide personal care. Let's focus here. What's our role to provide the personal care? Assist the clients in activities of daily livings, which we call ADLs, ADLs. Facility may also have subacute units. Sometimes facility has subacute unit. It means the people who are coming from the surgical activities 
after their replacement of the hip or knee or broken bone they are come from those hospital settings and those special care units such as alzheimer's disease unit or dementia unit where people are confused where people are uh, disoriented of the time place and person they do not know where they are now they forget everything in those facilities initially it was called locked unit but now it is called special care unit it is no more called the locked unit issues and challenges associated with working in the facility so imagine what could be the issues and challenges please go to the page number 43 and read about the issues 43 and 44 in which area would you like to work do you want to work in the long-term care home or community it's your choice after the completion of the course when you have the license you can go anywhere you want to work which area do you feel you might have the most challenging with do you want to go to the palliative care end life care of the resident you may or how will shift work affect your present situation do you have a small kid when you go to work you the you may have to look after the small kid and maybe you have to work evening shift after you send the kid to the school or the daycare so how will shift work affect your present situation present situation may include family situation personal health situation financial situation and so on so these are the areas we are we will be keeping on discussing about those things but go through the textbook and the slides together for your better understanding and thank you for your patience to remain with me thank you have a great day